Dark Cast Network. The light shines brightest on our indie podcasts. getting your fitness on this week. I'm very proud of you. How do you feel? Tired. But do you feel good in the morning? Not really. How about at night? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) No. No, I don't feel good at all. What are you talking about? That's a negative. I really want to work out. I just, I I just don't have it in me. I, I, I just need to find like a video on YouTube that I could just do or. There's a lot of videos on YouTube, like a whole bunch. Lots and lots. YouTube is like the fucking highway to free information. Pretty much. Yeah, there's a billion, like, exercise videos. Because I used to do, when I was doing the Miracle Morning um, yoga. I've done YouTube yoga, too. I just have to do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I either have to turn it off. Pretty much. And then I'll be fired up, but whatever. C'est la vie, c'est la vie. Um, Brandy, how's your week? It's not as productive as I... As I wanted it to be. So there's that. What did you want to get done that you haven't been able to accomplish? I haven't written as many words as I wanted to this week. Which is, you know... Because I've been doing other shit like exercising. (laughs) (laughs) So Stupid exercise. Exactly. So, you know... Well, I feel like I saw... I'm always going to bring it back to a meme. It's like, oh, I'm just trying to... Be healthy, drink water, be a boss, do this, have my mental health, la 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 la. All this fucking stuff we're supposed to be able to accomplish and do. <laughs> There's only so much time in the day, exactly. and sometimes you just don't want to fucking do it. Yeah, that's most of the time you just don't want to fucking do it. Yeah. I'm like, uh Okay, either I exercise, and then like between exercising, I have to, you know, be running into the room to check on an elderly person. And then eating and then, you know, (laughs) stuff. So it's just like, there's always shit to do. And like the things all I want, I can either do this or do that. I can't do all of it. I try and do all of it and I end up going crazy and not even realize what I'm like, what am I trying to accomplish? Like what has happened here this morning? I'm sorry. Back to you. (laughs) Back to you. You didn't get everything accomplished the way you wanted it to. I didn't. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't write as many words as I wanted to this week. And so I'm like. Mm. there's always next week yeah there's always next week uh, and then the, the issue is like okay I can wake up earlier to do you know one of these things but it's like then that's just less sleep so that <laughs> how the fuck does that work because then I can't even function right because I don't have enough sleep so it's if just, Beyonce it, can do it you can do it but I I've learned or I've just figured out they've got help They've got lots and lots of help. Mm-hmm. They've got a team. Mm-hmm. They got people doing this, doing that. Yep. And um, we need a team. And they have like trainers, and you know, so it's not and chefs exactly. and babysitters exactly and fucking stylists and glam squad. Yeah. So you know, the poor people have to just suffer with what we've got. <laughs> Us, we're the poor people. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, so uh how was your week i am doing what i just said running around trying to get everything accomplished and um oh 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 okay today i scheduled my uh real estate exam okay so when is that taking place oh gosh okay countdown with the countdown start february 18th that's when i'm gonna take the test um so basically a month yeah. Like, roughly a month. Yeah. So, there's, like, six practice tests for different parts of the exam. How many parts are there? Six. There's six parts? There's... So, there's six practice tests for different sections of, like, the law, financing, property ownership, um, appraisals, mm-hmm. um... There's so many different facets <laughs> of real estate that I've learned, yay... But now it's like I can't be confused on a test when they ask me these fucking questions and they trick me and they use different verbiage. So I have to con- I have to take these practice exams 
and get like an 85 to 90. Right now I'm getting about a 75. So I need to be able to get an 85 to 90% on these practice exams that I'm going to continue to take. And my instructor is like, hey, if you're getting 85 to 90 consistently, you, you will pass the test. Okay, so they have like trick questions or like they change words. They or change whatever. the words and they want to trick you. <laughs> of course, standardized testing. Is it standardized testing? I don't know what the fuck it is, <laughs> but it's... It, are they multiple choice questions? Or yeah, they- they're multiple choice questions. And it's like, I've learned to speak a new language. I've learned something new. Is there essay questions? <laughs> no, there's no essay questions. How do you say this fucking house? Um, is this going to be on the test? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did that today, actually. So that's exciting. Um, I um, am making dog biscuits. I redesigned my website. Check out beautiesbiscuits.com. This episode is sponsored by Beauty's Biscuits. Beauty's Biscuits. Woo. Woo! They are pumpkin turmeric gourmet dog biscuits for the bitches. I have got Beauty's Valentines again. They're they're back. Uh-huh. Heart shaped yum yum treats for your dogs. Visit beautiesbiscuits.com. Use offer code lies and save fifteen percent. <laughs> offer code liar. Nope, lies. L i e s. Either all uppercase or either all lowercase. Okay, great. Okay, so, great. I've been working on my website, doing this, doing that. I'm just, I, I just, oh, God. I just get overwhelmed sometimes. And I think that's when I, like, really start, like, freaking out and, like, having, like, little mini um, anxiety attacks. Like, what am I doing right now? My heart starts racing. And then I just have to, like, calm down. Yep. Oh, and then my weed girl fell off. Like, I, like, scheduled for her to come one day. Who's your weed girl? You don't order from the dispensary anymore? No, but I can. I'm going to have to. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, I'm in there. Oh, I'm in there. Never showed up. And I was like, hey, bitch, what's the deal? And she's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, blah, blah, blah. I've got a life, too. Like, let me know when you're not coming through. Hey, I was expecting you. I was waiting, bitch. <laughs> I'm dry. WTF. <laughs> so now it's like. You don't oh. want to make this paper? <laughs> right? I guess. I guess not. Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, hey. <laughs> I'm Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Fleeks. And this is Book, Book of Lies. Lies. The podcast. It's bolt, bitches. <laughs> Hello, listeners. How are you guys? Welcome. Thank you for being here. If you aren't already, go ahead and follow, subscribe, do the things, come back. If you're new, hi. We've got like a thousand other episodes. If you're liking this a one thousand. so far, <laughs> if only 144, excuse me. If you're enjoying what you're listening to, you can visit our website, bookoflivespodcast.com, and listen to all of our previous episodes. You could subscribe on your podcast player. Wherever you're listening now, you can find us. Uh, oh um, my God, I remember one time. On Facebook, somebody was like, can somebody do, you know, give me podcast recommendations? I was like, hey, listen to Book of Lies podcast. And they're like, how many episodes are there? I was like, I don't know, like six. Oh, that's not enough. I want to binge all of, I want to, <laughs> I'm going to be dragging for hours. I was like, bitch, you can listen. Bitch, that's six hours of content. Why are you being such a hater? Mm, but. but you know what? They're, okay. Hey, if you have a new podcast, keep doing your thing, boo-boo. Don't let nobody dull your shine. But there are people out there that they're like, oh, only 30 episodes sounds eh. mm. <laughs> The fuck? Fuck you. Shut okay? <laughs> like, stop it Do right now. Do you have a podcast? <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have 145. Boom, right here. Come on back. We got something for you. Already? Um, we're on social media as well. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the things. Book of Lies Pod or Book of Lies Podcast. Our three-year podcast anniversary slash birthday is coming up very, very soon. Like the first week in February. Yes. And I want to get a a new cover art done. So a new design for the podcast. And I want to put it out to the listeners to create something for us. Mm. And if you do... And we pick it. Uh, first of all, we love you. We'll give you shout outs. We'll make stickers. Send them to you. And I think I'm going to like redesign our merch with like some new fan art, I guess you would call that. Mm. 
Because I don't have the gift of the pen. You know what I mean? I can't draw for shit. Brent's always like, make this. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> Kids want you to, with children, they want you to be like everything. <laughs> they want you to be everything. Be my Picasso. <sighs> and be all knowledgeable and be magical and be strong and everything. Brent's like, carry me. I want to fly. Like, I can't. You're like 45 pounds. Yeah, I know. Ugh. <sighs> You're way more than a bag of potatoes. Get out of here. Because bag of potatoes come in 10 pounds. You're 45 pounds. <laughs> Too big for me. Anyway, back to that. Yeah, I'm so our fly. <laughs> Make me you fly. Have nerve. <laughs> Girl, you better walk. Um, yeah, so our three-year anniversary is coming up. We're going to do something special. So we need to think about what else we're going to do. And um, so the Salt Lake City Housewives are coming to an end very soon. Mm, your yeah. your girlfriend Mary Cosby ain't coming back. Good God, she's Ugh. horrible. She's an awful person. She's and it's horrible. funny. They're like, how how are you friends with the meanest person in the group? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> she is. She is very she is mean. the meanest one. And and. She is in denial about it, which is funny because she thinks she can fucking say whatever she wants to people. Mm-hmm. And then when they say shit back to her, then she gets upset. Mm-hmm. I can't take it. I, I, I can't stand her. <laughs> I just want her to go away. But I'm not trying to knock anybody's like skin or anything that's going on in their lives. But like her skin looks horrible. Her wig is beat. She needs to get a new wig. I was like, why does she keep wearing that fucked up wig? Or at least get it conditioned or something because it's like... Dry and brittle. It is. Like, you you have all that money. Stop spending it on all that shit and just, like, get your wig done. Like, for real. Just get it washed or, and, you know, fucking give it a blowout. Do something with it because it's all... Like, it, it, it's, it's worn. She needs to switch out her wigs. I mean, hello, you better call Kim Zolciak. Tell her to hook she you up. She knows, but I feel like... Um, Mary only wants to deal with people that are in her family. Have you noticed that? The people around her, like her her maid or housekeeper is like her cousin. No, I didn't. Or something. It. Yeah, it's her cousin. And then if you like look at people that she's talking to when it says their name, it's like Mary's cousin and their role. But she likes to keep it in the family. Well, I think she's worried, of course, but I think you definitely need to step outside of that, honey, and get... Get your help because you got money to pay for the help. So everybody that she wants around her is people that yes, are people. gonna say yes to her. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they're not gonna question her and they're not gonna, you know, uh call her out on her shit. And I mean, like, seriously, the way she talks, I'm just like, ew. Like, why would anybody want to be around her for real? It's just fucking weird. It's weird. She's weird. Well, she won't be coming back Thank from what I God. hear next season. Good. Um, I can't wait for the finale. And let, she didn't even show up to the freaking reunion, apparently. For real? Mm-hmm. What a trash bag. <laughs> I'm sure that's in the contract. I'm sure Andy's going to sue her ass. That's probably why she ain't coming back. Andy's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Waste my time. I got a chair for you and everything. Mm. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Interesting. Oh. So on this, uh, okay, we're going to get into the episode, I promise. But on this recent episode, when they were on the, um, they are riding up to Zion, Jen was all in Lisa's face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Heather was like, okay, I'm with Meredith and Mary. Like, if it's going to get me out of this situation, she was like, I will will put my hat on. I will sit around the cauldron. (laughs) Oh, my God. I was laughing my ass off. She was like, just get me out of this situation. (laughs) Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. That was funny. But Jen needs to sit down. She needs to chill the fuck out. She's too fucking, like... She's like, oh, uh, me, me, me. But you're not, you're like literally like being violent right now. You need to chill the fuck out. You want to fight. <laughs> okay. Like you don't want somebody to kick your ass and you don't want to go to jail, but you want to be up in my face and I will punch you. So I will sit the fuck down. threaten my life again, bitch. Mm-hmm. Threaten my life because you know what? <laughs> and freaking Lisa, I am shutting down right now. I'm freaking shutting down right now. I was like, oh my God, these, these people, they need to fucking chill out. Like, okay, you're shutting down right now. <laughs> what does that exactly mean? You're just going to like roll over in a fetal yeah. position? What does that something? entail? <laughs> it means leave me alone. She's Stop. Like, Curl up in a ball. <sighs> it was really strange. She's just like, girl, you going to let this bitch talk to you this way? I love how Jenny was like, I am from Long Beach. She, I will put my hair up, take my earrings off. <laughs> she did. And I was like, 
Okay, Jen, me, <laughs> Jenny from the block, apparently, because she's like, I know how to get down. Jenny from the LBC. But she did. She, like, put herself in between um, Lisa and Jen. Yeah. And she, Jen's mad because Lisa doesn't treat Meredith the same way. Mm-hmm. That's really stupid and petty. Yeah. You don't treat her the same way you treat me. I don't want to be your friend no more. <laughs> I'm going to fight you. <laughs> Grow up. Nobody's got time for all that stuff. They're all, they're all a bunch of, listen, okay, you are older than 45, you need to chill the fuck out. You really do. You're going to break a hip, <laughs> you're going to freaking have to go to the hospital, just chill. Um, can I just take a moment out to say, like, pray for Tonga? <laughs> yeah. And all the surrounding islands? For real. And I, like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah, it sucks. It's dude, it's the end of the world. Like, let's let's just be. This is what it is. It's the freaking end of the world. Ever since Donald Trump was elected, he's the fucking. He's one of the horsemen of the apocalypse. Oh shit! And so it's coming, y'all. So y'all better be, you know, prepared. I hope you can dig a hole and you know bury yourself until <laughs> the fucking fire stops. Because oh, you know, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Because goddamn it. <laughs> well, uh, shit is happening. We're still gonna pray for Tonga. And um, I hope, like, you know, people can communicate with their family and get the help that they need over there. And Yeah, because they, they don't have any, any like, communication. Like, it's... Well, that's how it was when Hurricane Dorian, when we c- couldn't talk to anybody. We mm-hmm. couldn't get any, anything. Yeah. So I just, this is a horrible position to be in. And, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with those affected and those who have family that have been affected. Yeah. Okay. So, Brandy, would you like to know what we're talking about today? Sure, Sunny. What are we talking about today? Because this is going to be a shorty doo wop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are talking about. Have you heard of Emily Horn? No. But before we get into that, fuck. They're doing a movie, of course, about um, Elizabeth Holmes called Bad Blood. And fucking Jennifer Lawrence is going to play Elizabeth Holmes, and I am going to be fucking waiting with bated breath to watch this fucking movie because she's a fucking perfect person to play her. It's mm-hmm. like fucking like they because she can have, she could do the voice too. Well, she's working on the voice, but I'm just like yes, yes, perfect casting. I want to see it. I want to see it. Mm-hmm. That's all. Okay, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Emily Horn. Okay, that's her name. So I'm not going to, I'm going to bury the lead. And so I'm not going to tell you what, well, anyway. I can tell her you what she did. Yeah. This is a lighthearted one. So Emily, Emily was born, Emily Jane Horn, um, born December 9th, 1978 in Great Britain somewhere. I don't know. Somewhere in Great Britain. Okay. Sure. In England somewhere, I guess. I don't know. (sighs) Um, Okay. She went by many aliases, um, Emiliana Carmichael, Emma Banker, Emily Lancott, and Anna Matthews. Um, my sources, I got this from express.co.uk, bbc.com, Wikipedia, who I give my money to. I like They're like, hey, bitch, you gave us money before, give us some more. I'm like, all right. <laughs> They're like, free information must be paid. Not really, but I get it. Um, I, I'm like, here's Help 10, support us. Here's ten dollars for the Please. year. Please. Here you go. You guys are good you guys are good folks. So um You're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> you're doing the Lord's work. When Emily was twelve years old, her parents, uh what was her father's name? Graham. And I'm not really sure what the mom's name was. Oh, her mom's name was Anna, I think. Anyway, her parents divorced. Uh-huh. And during, it was a messy divorce. Of course it was. And the mom was a liar. And oh, the God. mom said, so she could get this, like, documented, that Emily and her father had an incestuous relationship that Emily um, engaged in. Wait, okay. The daughter that they was got, 12 they, years old. Okay, she's 12. She's 12. Okay. What? What right. the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Weird. So this was all a lie. Of course it was. The dad was like, uh, he couldn't do anything, but Emily was like, this is straight bullshit. But while that was happening, she was forced to live with her mom for like six months while they had to iron things out. Right. Because they had to like get proof. Investigate and, and do yeah, all the things. Right. And I guess Emily was like, you know, this is not right. This never happened. And like, she was like, this was the, the one time I told the truth. 
in my whole life. What like, this? You know, it's really no, bad. no, no. Later on in life, like later on uh, as, she, as an adult, she was like at that time. You know, okay. yeah. It sounds this sounds familiar. Okay, like, like we did somebody that was similar to her or something. But okay, go ahead. Um. Okay. Well, once she was able to like make it back to her dad or whatever, they were. Like walking somewhere, and there was a, walking somewhere. yeah, they're like walking down the street, la da da da, da and um, in York, okay, and Yorkshire, excuse me, that's York, Yorkshire, yeah, it was like a thrift store or something, and she saw this wedding dress, and she was like, oh, daddy, buy me this wedding dress, and it was like twenty bucks, and he was like, she wouldn't leave me alone, so I bought her this fucking dress. <laughs> and um, she just like lived her best life in this dress, twirling around in it, having the best time. But after her parents got divorced, something changed in her. Right. When she turned 16. She cracked. She cracked. Oh, shit. <laughs> when she turned 16, she dropped out of school mm. and was coming and going from the house. And her dad's like, where the fuck have you been? She's like, oh, it's cool, Dad. I'll be back in a few days. She'd be gone for days at a time. When she turned 18. Sounds like a problem child. Sounds like a problem child. When she turned 18, she got married. <laughs> of course she did. Of course she did. She married her first husband, Paul Rigby. He was an old classmate. Um, they got married in December of 1996 um, when she was 18. And he was on leave from the Royal Irish Regiment. Okay. Um, and I guess they were living in Leeds. He was on leave and then she went with him and I guess they tried it out for a year. And they just, they didn't work. Right. But they never divorced. Okay. This bitch sounds really familiar. Did we do another story like this, like a per, of a person like this? Probably. I don't, I don't know. They're they didn't they just separated. She's still legally married and she's working in a tavern as a barmaid, and she meets this fella by the name of Sean Cunningham, and he was like, you know, she was very attentive to me. Like she made me feel so special. She put her mouth on my penis. <laughs> she laughed. She smiled. <laughs> She's perfect. Oh, God. And she was like, let's get married. Okay. And he's like, um, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, because she was like, you know, we can't have sex until we get married. And so he's like, um, all right, let's do it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. They get married, and then instantly she's pregnant, right? Like, he was like, oh, I'm pregnant. But she loses He's the baby. like, but we didn't have sex. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> um, but then she loses the baby. Oh, and no. then her and Sean are um, just like living it out. And they got married in 99. So she was always looking for work. And then she went to Norway. Her and Sean are still married. And she still... She just moved to Norway? She just left to Norway for a job. So she's always moving around for a job. And then Sean, her second husband... Who technically isn't her second husband. Right. But um, he was like, you know, first she was very, like, attentive, and then all of a sudden she's being very distant, going out. I don't know what she was doing. Then she goes to Norway for a job, and then shacks up with another dude who becomes her boo-boo. She collects dudes. She collects dudes. When she was in Norway, she eventually, like, left the dude that she... Because she shacks up with people. She'll go places, meet you, and like, I love you, let's live together. Ugh. And makes up stories as well. So she's very, um, she's good at reading people and learning what they like uh -huh. and being very knowledgeable about said subject that they like. Oh, okay. It's the fucking, the, um, the, 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 um, the hipster grifter. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Maybe that's what she sounds like, right? Yeah, but she didn't get married. No, this bitch collects dudes. Okay. So then she returns back to the United Kingdom after her relationship with the Norwegian dude didn't work out. And then she started um, a job as a quote unquote glamour model. Do you know what that means? <laughs> what is a glamour model? Thank you. Okay, because I'm like, oh, she a glamour model. All right. No, 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 no. She's like she, glamour she, magazine model. She's what a porn star. About? She's okay. a porn star. Thank so you. she's doing that, and she's doing escort work. Oh wow! All right then. And then she's also appearing in adult. So films. she's cute. She's all right. Like she's a LA five. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fucked up, right? I mean, in England, you know, she's they an, have she's an English eight standards. She's an English eight for porn, I guess. I don't know. She was young. She was perky. She like you know, blue eyes, nice skin, blonde hair. You know, the dudes that she was with, they were like frumpy, nerdy looking dudes. Okay. And so there were dudes that would have been like, oh, yes, this babe yes. loves me. Yes. I'm happy. Yes, yes, yes. I'll yes, do whatever yes. to keep her. 
Got it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So then um, she marries a guy by the name, was it Simon? Probably. There's a lot Simon. of Simon. A lot of Simons Simon. in England. Simon. I think Simon was the guy that she was like in love with. Okay. 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 She returns back from the United, um, from Norway. She's doing the glamour model work. And then she meets this guy by the name of Simon. And then, like, he was like, she was all right. Like, you know, I didn't love her or anything, but she was cool. And she's saying, he lo- he told me he loved me. And this, he was like, not, that didn't happen. <laughs> but he knew that she was still, like, she was married to Sean. How did he know? Because she told him okay. that she was married to Sean. And so she's trying to get with Simon. And Simon. Sam- his name is Simon. Simon. <laughs> and. Simon is like, well, you've got a situation going on here. And then, look, I ain't trying to be in no entanglement. (laughs) While she's still trying to do this, she finds another fool, another guy. Let's just call him Peter. Because I I don't remember his name. Too many names. Yeah, let's call him Peter, right? And she's dating Peter, fucking Simon. She runs into her ex-husband or her current husband. The man she's married to. Sean. She know. The first guy, Paul, she's legally oh, married okay. to. She's still married got to it, him. Got it, got it. Marries Sean. Right. Apparently, Sean lost his job. She's a bigamist. Yes. Okay. She's a bigamist. Uh-huh. This is what this episode's about. It's about bigamy. Because guess what? She gonna have a whole bunch of other husbands? Yes. Yeah. Yes, babe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dude. So, she runs into Sean after he like lost his job. He can't pay the mortgage. And he's down on his luck. She's like, well, me and Peter can move in, and we'll pay the rent. We'll pay the mortgage. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, this is such a fuck- Peter, so this random dude. Oh, that's right. Paul that is she's, the first husband. That right. she's trying to make um, Simon jealous because Simon doesn't want to be with her because he's like, you're married, bitch. <laughs> so she's with Peter, who knows nothing at all. He's just like, he's oh, John Snow. Uh huh. <laughs> you know nothing, <laughs> John Snow. They move into Sean's house where she's paying the mortgage and doing this. So she's doing this glamour model work, right? Do they know about that? No. Oh, God. They don't know about it. So then Sean is like, this was like the worst time of my life. Like, you know, because he still likes her. He still loves Emily. Mm-hmm. And they're going upstairs and they're in their room. He was living in the house too? He was living in the house. Okay. I was like, this is a cuck situation yeah. like he's just a cuck and he's just sitting there sad right <laughs> so then she convinces peter to marry her what right they come home one day smiling and peter's like we got married tell sean sean's like what the fuck like we're married right and so um he was like because i watch oh there's also this documentary on um since brandy already spilled it but there's a documentary on youtube called um, Something About My Five Husbands. Something like that. I'll put it in the show notes if you guys are interested. They were like, did you add, Did you tell Peter that y'all was married? And he was like, no. And so he was like, okay, well, you, you're dumb. Okay, yeah, you're in my house. Like, you, mm-hmm. this whole thing sounds crazy to it's, me. It's it pretty sounds dumb. like a bunch of dummies. It is a bunch of dummies. Okay. So then um, the relationship with Peter fizzles out after a few months. She stops living with Sean, but she's traveling on the train doing the glamour model work, doing escorting, because she's also an escort. Right. So she meets her fourth husband. His name is... What the fuck was his name? Paul was her first husband. Hang on a second. She meets... He's a train conductor. <laughs> let's, call him, let's, let's call him Terry. So she... Like, he was like, oh, you know, she was very pretty. You know, she dressed very nicely. And, like, you know, we had a conversation over her ticket. You know, she's like, let's get married. They were on a train. He was a train conductor. She was on a train. She was on a train. He's a train conductor. Why was she on the train? Traveling to do some escort work. Oh, okay. Traveling to the city. She's always on the train. And so. This is exhausting. I'm already exhausted from this story. (laughs) Well, so she marries Terry, the train conductor. All names have been changed to save everybody's life. To protect the innocent. To protect the innocent. And Terry is like, oh, you know, she has the same morals I do. She believes in marriage. But then he talks about their sex life. And he was like, she was down for anything. She wanted to <laughs> Put try it in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> my eye. Try my eye. Oh, goodness. He was just, like, talking about that. And then, like, she, the relationship starts to 
She starts she's to get distance. So then she, she was like, well, whatever, you know, you're my fourth husband. And he's like, okay, um, what? And <laughs> she's like, well, yeah, I'm married already. I have three other husbands and you're my fourth. What? You know, I... He's like, excuse me? that You're not married, dude. You're not married. He calls the police. <laughs> she's married already this bitch so um this is in 2003 he called the when police. he called the police he called the, the local authority and it was like um he gathered evidence about like all the people she was married to and blah 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 takes it to the you know the popo wow and she gets convicted and does six months does six for bigamy for bigamy, right? What is the sentence for bigamy? I mean, six I months. don't know what it is here, but uh. I, it really depends. Because then I found this other article, and it was talking about bigamy in Canada and French Canada during like the Revolution, and women are twenty five percent of bigamists are women. Yeah, very. But this happened a lot in when the men went away to war mm. because the women were collecting checks. Yeah. So like one chick had married married three guys. And they didn't figure it out. The way they figured it out was because they were sending back checks to the family and they were going to the same address three right. times for three So the people, dudes. the check writers were like, um... The, the military right, or whatever. They uh-huh. were like, okay, this bitch did this. But this was like in the 1900s mm-hmm. and she did four years. The chick uh, that this happened to. Okay. Um, this one did six months in 2003. Okay. After she does this, she's now working in a massage parlor. She gets out... Now, she's, she's doing a lot of sex work. Mm-hmm. Whatever, do your thing. She meets this guy, this guy by the name of Ashley. And Ashley meets her because his friends purchased her services for his birthday. And oh. he wanted to be Captain save Oh, gosh. So, let's get married, Ashley. Does oh. he not know? Okay, okay. She's ahead. still married. Yes. He marries her. They have pictures. She's wearing like it was it looked like a white trash wedding. Like they went to the court, she's wearing jeans and a black tank top. And like she's like, I'm not I don't knock tall chicks and short dudes, but she was like at least like five seven and he was like five three. Okay. And Ashley, he was Irish because Ashley didn't want to appear on the documentary, but his sisters did, and they were like, Oh my god, you know, are you using protection with her? Like, where has she been? You've only known her for three weeks. And la, 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 la. So, they got married after three weeks. Yeah. Why? Okay, go ahead. Because they want to save her. But I think, okay, I, so, later on we learn, I'm just going to say, that she has mental health problems. Of course. You'd have to. She's dealing with, right, exactly. She probably has um, borderline personality disorder. They did say she has personality disorders. They said she might have been bipolar. Mm Mm-hmm. And so she marries Ashley, her fifth husband, and then fucks off. Like, the sisters knew it wasn't going to last. And, like, you know, uh, she just gets in this relationship. It's a whirlwind. She's in love. She gets married. And then she fucks off to go do somebody or something else. Right. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, what is she getting out of this? She's not doing it for money. What is she getting out of this? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's like a self-esteem thing or something. I think it is. Um, then she's like, I guess, in and out of the, okay, so she lies to people and says, oh, my dad's dead. She says that she had a sister who died of meningitis as a kid. Then she's dating this other guy who she meets in the hospital. They just like hit it off on gurneys talking to each other, I guess. Why was she in the hospital? I don't, well, it doesn't specifically say why she was in the hospital, but she does, you know, say that she was raped. And, like, her father didn't, like, help her out because he was kind of sick of her shit. Like, you know, she went to him for help and he was just like, fuck you, you know, whatever. He was probably like, you're doing sex work. Are you sure you were raped? Or some shit like that. Maybe. Who knows? But, um, so then she was like, that's when my father died. He died to me. Oh, okay. So she had his funeral in her mind. Yes. All right. A lot of this stuff that she's like, oh, this person died. This happened. This, this is all going on in her head. It's not factual. And then when you talk to her, she's like, well... Emily, 10 years ago, thought this way. <laughs> and I can't say... I'm not her anymore. <laughs> yeah. Exa- she's... Uh-huh. And when the interviewer was like, so, you know, you were a prostitute. And she was like, no. <laughs> no. And she was like, I'm an escort. There's a difference. And he was like, okay. 
She has like an escort. They pay for your time. He was like, did you ever have sex with anybody while you were an escort? She was like, of course. <laughs> so he's like, all right. It's apples and oranges. It's apples and oranges. She's like, it's not like working I at mean, a massage. Apples and it's not it's like working apples at and apples, apples. a massage parlor. She's splitting hairs. Yeah, but she worked at a massage parlor doing massages and whatever else and, and shit. happy endings. Yes. That's how she snagged Ashley. Okay. So then, um, during the documentary, uh, well, before the documentary, in 2008, she married Ashley, right? And so then they take her up again for bigamy charges because they're like, bitch, you did it again. You did it again. <laughs> Why doesn't she just divorce these men, though? That's the thing I don't understand. She's collecting dudes. She needs to divorce her first husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're separated. Right. And I guess did I don't he know. die in her mind? I don't know, Brandy. Maybe he died in her mind, and okay. you know he's dead. I don't have to divorce him. <laughs> There's the death certificate. <laughs> She's being held up on charges for for that for bigamy again right. in 2009. And so during this documentary, they're like documenting this, and you know her her fight for her life. Or whatever, like bitch, you. Why did is this. it a fight for her life? Because she, she, they want to go to jail. They want to put her in jail. Okay, so, so it's she, not for her. They're not going to put her in jail for life. No, anyway, exactly no. to lose time. Yeah. Anyway, so she gets sentenced to a um a suspended sentence. So she gets like two years, I think, like probation, and she doesn't end up doing time. Lucky her. Yeah, they say they treat. Well, I could tell they treated this bitch real nice, but they say with women. They're not, they're more lenient with their bigamy than, <laughs> than with uh, women's bigamy. I'm with, gonna go find some husbands real quick. I'll be back. Yeah, I'll I'll be right back. <laughs> so then, after she beats this charge, she finds two other men to marry her on the internet. Okay. She finds these dudes. Are internet husbands? The last two were internet husbands, but she like went to the U.S. to meet one. So one of them was from the U.S. So she, she came here. She she traveled internationally to be a bigamist to marry a one husband, bigamist. and then and the her. other husband is from um, Ireland, right? She, so, I, but this is funny. So the last husband's name, her seventh husband's name, was Craig Hadwin. She dressed up as her husband, like she like. Put on baggy clothes. And she was rocking a short haircut already. But she went to his doctor or a doctor to get prescription meds like for sleep for sleep aids or something like that. Okay. What? Okay. It's weird. Okay. It's weird. How? Do they not do exams? I don't I don't. I mean, it's, you, you don't have to makes, do an exam for it sleep. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? And uh, she okay. tricked a doctor into giving her sleeping pills. Okay. Because I'm sure she's on other medications and she has to figure it out. So they catch her for that. I think she's off her meds. Exactly. And um, <laughs> they catch her for that. So she basically, she identity theft. That's what that is. Uh-huh. It's identity Fraud. theft. Fraud. Fraud. Uh-huh. She goes in front of the judge. And the judge is like, you are really sad. <laughs> oh. He and said you're sad. I, I want you to get help. Okay. Well, we see that he said that. <laughs> I want you to get help. And all this bullshit, this this needs to stop. Because if I see you again, I'm throwing the fucking book at you. Right. Like, get help. <laughs> this is in 2009. Knock it off. This is in 2011, by the way. Uh, and, like, this is just, stop it. Yeah, he's like, knock it the fuck off, bitch. Just stop. <laughs> Because, like, they're just like, they're like, oh, it's okay, let me pat you on your butt and get on out of here. Yeah, I'm tired of seeing your face in my court. Uh-huh. Get out of here and don't come back. And don't come back. Yeah. But she... She's a repeat offender. She's a repeat offender, and it's I, mental health. I don't think sex work is very easy. I think it takes it out of you, depending on what you've been doing. Well, you don't really get into sex work. You know, most women don't get into sex work because it's fun. You know, I mean, there are those women that are like, yeah, I do it because it's fun. But then there's the ones that have like substance abuse issues or, you know, um, mental health issues or they do it, you know, to survive. Mm -hmm. She's not doing it to survive. She's doing it for something else. Just the marriage thing. It's so weird. Yes, that's weird. And they weren't even like grandiose weddings either. It was just like in front of the eyes of the. And then she was like, "Don't tell anybody." Like, <laughs> don't tell That's anybody. Don't tell me. Don't tell them what I told you. Like one dude, I think it was Simon. It was Simon. Simon. She told the one that didn't marry her. <laughs> he told her. She told him that her sister died of a drug overdose. 
Not meningitis. Not meningitis. And not as a child. This was this was somebody else. Another one of her husbands whose younger sibling died the same exact way. And she's like, oh, my sister died the same way too. What do you know, huh? But Uh Simon, she told him him that her sister died of a drug overdose. And he was like, I was torn up about that. He was like, I was real fucked up. In a British accent, of course. Uh-huh. And then she's like, oh, you know, her, her service is this day. And, you know, but... Oh, so he, it was like, it, she just died. Yeah. I thought it was like a, a it's story. A, a recent death. Okay. And so um, he, she was living at home with Simon and his mom. They were supposed to be the funeral. And Simon was like, hey, you know, mom, keep an eye out. You know, her sister died. And, you know, just... Yeah. Like, let's... He came know, home. Make sure she's okay. Make sure she's okay. She came home. And Simon's like, um, you know, how did it go? He, she, the mom's like, she didn't go anywhere. Now. She, didn't, she didn't go <laughs> she anywhere. She forgot what she said. Right. And then he confronted her about it. And she was like, what? Like, <laughs> huh? And she was I like, say that. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Like, you said that this person died. So are they dead or are they not dead? Do they even exist? This was someone that he had actually met that she was calling her sister. <sighs> but was not her sister, was just a friend. And she lied about it for sympathy. Okay. I'm exhausted. She's exhausting. I need a nap. Well, <laughs> she makes me need a nap. Seriously, that was that was Emily. Emily. So um, that was Emily. that that was Emily. She didn't. That was so it. She didn't go to prison. She didn't go to prison. The only time she did was that first time she got hit for six months. She went to jail for mm. bigamy. Did it again. Got a suspended sentence because mental health. And I think they felt bad for her. They felt bad for her. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're sad, the judge. Mm-hmm. You're, you're sad. You're sad. You're a sad little person. This is her and um, Sean the cook. Okay, me. he's actually kind of cute. That's her now. Oh. Well, she let herself go, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, this is her and Ashley. No, this is her and her third wedding. She looks 90s right here. Like this. That is that like, like 99. I think that's her third wedding. Oh, that's wedding. her. Her third. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that was in the 2000s, right? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Which one is this one? This is her fourth husband, the one who called the police on her. This is, <laughs> a- this is Ashley. They look the same. They look like... Look at her tits person. are hanging out. Like, <laughs> this is your wedding. <laughs> Put those tits away. But he looks 12. Yeah, he does. He looks like a little boy. <sighs> look at them. This is them getting married. Her and Ashley. Oh. Yeah, the whole thing is... Ooh. Uh, okay. What? She's, is that a wig? That's a wig. Yeah, it's, it's a wig. Terrible. It's terrible. a terrible wig. <laughs> but this is her glamour model work. Yeah. I hope she, like, got help. I hope she is getting help. Um, I tried to see what she's doing now, but that was, like, the last thing we heard from her was, like, 10 years ago. And now she's in, like, 45-ish. Yeah. So, I don't know, but I thought to bring y'all something a little, little interesting, a little different today. Called the police on her. That's funny. <laughs> like, nope, not not today. Nope, nope. calling the cops. Nope, nope, nope. I will not be your fifth. Look, you have no legal obligation to, to even be around her. So just go about your merry way. Find somebody else to marry. Like, well, I guess like in like certain it hurt his feelings. Um, certain Middle Eastern cultures, like polygamy is okay, but after four wives, if you marry a fifth one, then they're like, okay, hell no. But they're not in the Middle East. They're in England. Yeah. And she just needs to get divorced. Four wives is okay. A woman to have four husbands in the Middle East? That's not happening. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-mm. You want what? They're going to stone her. Exactly. <laughs> That's not right. Why not? I could do with two husbands. Uh, please. I don't even want the one. <sighs> <laughs> All right. I don't need another. I don't need another one. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. fine then. There Ready? What have you been watching? Um, uh, I've been watching, um, Peacemaker. Oh, God. Oh, let's talk about it! <laughs> I've been watching, I've watched the first, I'm sorry, I'm yelling. There's only three. No, nope. I checked today, there's a fourth episode okay. today. Yeah, um, God. You know what, honestly, I like seeing John Cena like this, because John Cena was taking himself way too seriously before. He's not taking himself seriously And I really like to this. see him, like, you know, be funny. Because, like, even when he was on, um, Total Bellas, he was, like, such a dick. I never watched it. He was just too fucking serious. It was like, you do need to lighten the fuck up. So I'm glad that he's taking on roles like this because I liked John Cena when he was a wrestler, but he took himself way too fucking seriously. And that's like, remember he started acting in the early 2000s? Yeah. Doing like that, what was that one show? The Marine. He Mm -hmm. was doing Mm -hmm. movies like that where he was playing like 
hero types, but he was just like the same stuffy. No, he was just really stuffy. Yeah. And it was like, ugh. like he wasn't, none of his roles were like amusing. He was just, but now he, you know, he's doing comedy work, and I like that. You so, like the dancing? I like the, that. Is so ridiculous. He's not thing. even smiling. Like he's so serious and deadpan, like this. <laughs> but they're not dancers. I think it's hilarious because they look. They all look ridiculous. They dancing. look crazy. <laughs> but when when it comes on, I'm like, okay, I skip it. Do you skip <laughs> I was it? Like, I saw this twice. I don't I need to see it. I watch it. I watch it. I don't it. need to see that intro anymore. I watch it. Um, I'm I'm for it as well. He's like, what the fuck's a butterfly? <laughs> <laughs> What's a butterfly? What's Project Butterfly? Yeah, because they won't tell him, and it's an actual fucking butterfly, which I thought is fucking hilarious. Because like, I was like, I was like, what's going? What's this butterfly going to do? What, what's it going to do? Well, when they started, when they li- literally used their proboscises to suck the nectar out of the bowls, I was like, they're actual fucking butterflies. Like what? I thought they were moths. Because when he was like, I'm not gonna have to fart in my throat. I'm fart in my throat. And I was like, mothra. a mothra. <laughs> but they're actual fucking butterflies. What the. fuck? Alien butterflies. Yeah, I've, I'm watching that as well. And, I mean, guys, it's 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 very funny. It's interesting. It's really funny. I can't... What's her name? I think her name is Tasty or whatever uh-huh. her name is in the show. Her name is Danielle. Danielle, who's... What's her name's daughter? Um, no, her name is Danielle in real life. Oh. Yeah. Is it Danielle Holland then? Uh, I, don't, I can't remember what her last name is, but her first name is She Danielle. just got married, by the way. That's good. Good for her. Um, she, I like her. Like I liked her as Tasty yeah. on um, Orange Is the New Black, mm-hmm. and she's very a good like comedic timing mm-hmm. performer. So I, I yeah, I enjoy her work. I ruined her oh, that's she was in the um, Jennifer Hall, not Jennifer Holiday. Um, the movie about the she was singing. It wasn't Jennifer Holiday though. It was somebody. Else. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> She was like, really? no. Mm-mm. She was just like, she sang for Jesus or something like that. Mm-hmm. Peacemaker. Her name is Tasty <laughs> Danielle Brooks. There you go, yeah. Danielle Brooks. Mm-hmm. And she did. Um, I know what movie you're talking about. Mahalia, Mahalia. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're talking about, Mahalia. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So Peacemaker. Anything else? Um. I mean, I watch you know my my all my reality shows, but that's about it. I haven't been watching anything. Um, oh, actually, no, I've been watching. I mean, it's you know episodic, but I've been watching um the Quinta Brunson show, um the teacher Abbott Elementary. Thank you. That shit is hilarious. It is good. Um, <laughs> there's three episodes. There's three episodes. Come through. It's fucking hilarious. It is. It's it's really good. The oh, principal, yeah. God, she is such she's a, she's a comedian. <laughs> she's such she an has asshole. a stand up on Netflix. Oh, does she? And she's fucking hilarious. Yeah, her character she's a, uh, is so ridiculous. I like when she made the viral videos of them when she was like when they were trying to like get Raise supplies. Money. Yeah, and she was like, "I need to have full creative control <laughs> on this." <laughs> she's like the worst principal ever. Oh yeah, that's right. She blackmailed. Uh, one of her church members, not a church member, yes, somebody like that. It was to a get church member, yes. It yeah, was. yes, it was. crazy. Anyway, what have you been watching? I, well, like I just told you, I'm watching Your Mom and My Dad on oh, okay. HBO Max. And I've just watched the first episode. I mentioned the second episode. It's a reality TV show. And it's like you're. Your parents are trying to like date and hook up, and then they're watching. And they all live in the same house. I don't know if I'd want to be in a house I, with a bunch of other grown ass adults. Well, you're not looking for love and you're married, so this is definitely out of your wheelhouse. And I feel like these parents are a bit older, so... They are. Like I said, I don't think I'd want to be in a house with a bunch of grown-ass adults. I know. Like, trying to figure out... Like, they, they know what's going on, right? The, the parents, they know what's going on? Other than the, the kids watching. They know everything that's going on, but they don't know the kids are able to watch and that the kids are the love consultants that they're saying oh, okay. that are guiding, like, their, their adventures and blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's interesting watch. That's on HBO Max. Also, hosted by Yvonne Orgy. Yvonne Orgy. I was really thinking, I didn't, like, when I went in, I was like, okay, so is Issa Rae going to be involved in this? But, you know, just whatever. <laughs> Settle down, Sonny. Um, hey, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. We love you. And if you're an artist, draw some fan art, please. Book of Lies podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> I'm Sonny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Fleeks. And this was Book Book of Lies, Lies. the podcast. 
It's bald, bitches. Hi, this is Molly. And Cody. The host of Over the Fence True Crime Podcast. Please join us as we talk about true crime in the most normal place in the world. Over Over the the fence. fence. To be specific, over our backyard fence. We're both moms of humans and of dogs. We live directly next door to each other and share many conversations about life and family, but mostly true crime over our backyard fence. And we invite you to come learn more about true crime and, well, us. We give a lot of attention to California true crime, but have ventured throughout the U.S. and even across the pond and plan to continue our world domination in the near future. Listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts or give us a follow on Instagram at over the fence underscore podcast. So grab a drink and talk with us over the fence. Over the fence.